member for Gravelough. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Back in 2012, the experts at Infrastructure New South Wales sat down to take a look at the major challenges facing Sydney's transport network. They later produced a report about their deliberations. Under the headline, First Things First, the experts, uh, chaired by Nick Griner, the former Premier of New South Wales, said the greatest transport challenge facing Sydney was rapid growth around Port Botany and the Sydney Airport. The Infrastructure New South Wales report said, with growth forecast to continue, investment is urgently needed in landside infrastructure to allow access to these gateways. It was identified access to the Port of Botany as the number one priority. The advice couldn't have been clearer. The other imperative, of course, was access to the central business district of Sydney. It was these two requirements, access for freight to the port in particular and cars to the CBD, that led uh, to the beginning of uh, what was termed to be uh, the WestConnex project. What we have today with the WestConnex project five years later is a very different project. It's one which doesn't go to the port. It doesn't meet the very challenges that were identified as the reason for its existence. This is the worst example of planning that I have seen for a major infrastructure project. What you need to do with infrastructure is get the plans right first, go through the community consultation process, go through the environmental approvals, and then you have funding provided. What we have with this project is literally a government which is making it up as they go along. This is a project where literally they started digging the tunnels before they knew where the tunnels were coming up. An extraordinary proposition. A project which began with a cost of some $10 billion, which has now blown out to $17 billion, which is now leading to calls for further extensions of the road network. In the 2014 budget of the Abbott government, the one where they cut funding for every public transport project that was not under construction, Shame. there was money handed out. And it was handed out as advance payments for projects that hadn't been through planning proposals and hadn't been through the Infrastructure Australia process. And that included the WestConnex project where the $1.5 billion in grant funding has already all been paid, every single dollar of it, even though the project won't be concluded until into the 2020s. Now, in government, we instituted a process whereby you would have milestone payments. That is the concept that you have to actually build uh, something and achieve the milestones that have been set in order for state governments to then be rewarded with payments from the federal government. But what we saw with this project was $750 million forwarded as an advance payment. We also then saw $2 billion made available uh, as a loan to uh, the New South Wales government, even though the New South Wales government has got a substantial uh, revenue from the sale of essential public assets in New South Wales. This is what the Auditor General had to say about the project. And I quote from the report released uh, last year, as a result of representations that I'd made asking for an audit into the financing processes of this project. He wrote, the WestConnex project had not proceeded fully through the established processes to assess the merits of nationally significant infrastructure investments prior to Australian government funding being committed. This situation was identified in departmental advice to decision makers 
prior to decisions being taken. So there we have it, the audit office saying that ministers ignored the advice. And with regard to the milestone payments, what they did, the audit office found, was just changed what the milestones were in order to justify the payments being made. We also saw a complete failure ongoing of community consultation. The residents of Haberfield, St Peter's, Ashfield, Leichhardt and Roselle all tell the same story. Take just one example, that of Vince Crow, a long-time resident of Haberfield. In June of 2014, Mr Crow received two letters from a representative of the West Connex Delivery Authority, both delivered on the same day. The first letter said, we're going to need to buy your property. The second letter, signed by the same gentleman, said we don't need to buy your property. Absolute uncertainty for this resident. The pattern of in inaccuracy, unprofessionalism and miscommunication has been repeated across my community ever since. About 180 properties have already been acquired out of a total of more than 400. And indeed, indeed the extraordinary circumstance whereby the New South Wales government received a report in 2014 about the compensation that people were due who were having their homes acquired was kept from those people, from the community, kept secret for more than two years. Across my community, residents have had to fight to protect public parks and sporting fields. Parks such as Ashfield Park, Eastern Park in Roselle, Blackmore Oval in Leichhardt were all defended by the local community. I made representation about all of, all, those, all of those public parks because open space is at a premium. Worse was to come with the idea that you would create a dive site next to the Leichhardt campus of the Sydney Secondary College, right next to the oval, the one oval that that overcrowded campus uh, has uh, to deal with. Uh, proposing to have a convoy of trucks rolling past school classroom windows in and out of the work site. Fortunately, the Minister, Stuart Ayres, who I approached in New South Wales about this, uh, intervened and it has been ruled out as a proposal. But at the same time, students in schools like St Peter's Public School had to put up with uh, circumstances of the de demolition of homes right near the school having a real impact on them. Haberfield Public School residents, uh, students and teachers are very worried about the impact of uh, the project on Haberfield. You would think, given uh, the extent of disruption, that senior people in the New South Wales bureaucracy would be concerned about this. The Greater Sydney Commission has responsibility for planning in Greater Sydney. In August of 2012, the chair of the commission, Lucy Turnbull, was interviewed on ABC Radio and was asked to comment on the fact that houses were being demolished in Haberfield to make way for West Connex. The chair of the commission said this, I'm not aware that there are houses going to be demolished at Haberfield. At this very time, dozens of houses which were heritage listed in a heritage listed suburb had already been demolished. Complete contempt for these local residents. Delivering major infrastructure projects is never easy. And the fact is that I support good infrastructure, public transport, as well as good road infrastructure. But you have to get the planning right. You also have to acknowledge that in our growing global cities like Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane, the key to dealing with urban congestion is public transport, not more and more and more road infrastructure. You must get the planning right and you must consult properly with the community and bring the community with you. In the words of the 18th century American statesman Benjamin Franklin, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. And with the West Connex project, which has now been set up under a separate authority, so freedom of information laws and the normal accountability of a government agency don't apply in New South Wales, is an example of trying avoiding bringing the community with an infrastructure project 
rather than proper consultation.